Sometimes it seems they don't show up in class anyway. And then we want to uh, get our last debate together. And it will be a debate on the issue of green dorms. Okay? So let's take a look at bias first. And that will take us about half the class and then green dorms. And, uh, and then we're done. Quiz is up. People are talking about taking the quiz together. I don't have a problem with that. You collaborate and you learn something, I'm happy. That's my big thing. Learn something. Learn something. What does Joker say? Hmm? What does Joker say? Okay. <laughs> Bias. <laughs> Bias. Okay. First thing we want to note about biases is that biases are not fallacies. Just because you have a bias doesn't mean that your reasoning is wrong. Unlike informal and formal fallacies, when you come upon fallacious reasoning, the reasoning does not lead where the, the, uh, 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 the person who is reasoning wants it to go. Bias actually can still lead you to valid and truthful reasoning. And they usually grow out of our perception of the world. How do we see the world? As you think about how you see the world, you see the world in certain ways because you are male. You see the world in certain ways because you are female. You see the world in certain ways because you are white. You see the world in certain ways because you are African American. You see the world in certain ways because you were raised on a farm or because you were raised in a city. It grows out of our perception. And there are several types of bias. There's first of all the bias of assumption. That's where we don't even think about how we're seeing the world being shaped by who we are and, and what we are as male, female, white, black, Latino, urban, rural. We don't even think about that. We just assume that everybody is like that or we assume that our way of seeing the world is the natural way of seeing the world. Sometimes they will grow out of thought processes. processes. And these are called biases, biases of cognition. That is, it's a certain way that we have already always reasoned and certain ways of, of thinking about the world. Or they grow out of what theologically we call concupiscence. Both Lutherans and Roman Catholics will talk about concupiscence. But we talk about it in different ways. And I talk about it in, in a decidedly Lutheran fashion. And what I mean by concupiscence is the idea that no matter how hard we try, there remains within us uh, an, an unrighteous, an unwilling, an un, uh, unholy, unclean part. There's a part of us that no matter how hard we try, we're going to end up with a bias. We want to remove them, but they're going to be there. And sometimes they show themselves as dishonesty. So let's look further at biases of assumption. First of all, our life is ordered often by rules. And rules theory talks about ways that in which we, uh, we can order life and do order life uh, in order to come out the way we want it, or come out the way it always should be. One of the rules, of course, is similarity. Things that are like, we group together, right? So that Shepard and Conrad both play soccer. They are like. And therefore, we might make the assumption that they are like in other things besides playing soccer. For example, Wolf, what would you say? Shepard and, and Conrad both play soccer, therefore, they both can run for very long times. They can run for very long times, which may or may not be true. And is and is quite harmless as an assumption. But what else might we assume about Shepard and Conrad? both playing soccer, both being able to run for very long times, that is what we, what might we assume? Because they are similar in this one. Um, that they're extremely competitive? That they're very competitive. We might also assume that they have the same attitude toward the opposite gender, and the same attitude toward the same gender. We might, cons we might assume that they, are, that they are more like in their academic than they are in their uh, social life, uh, or that they are like in their social life. And if we look at 
similarity, we also have to look at difference. So like is related to like, the rule of contrast. So that if we were to compare Ashley with Cody, Ashley plays soccer, Cody plays football. Contrast. Ashley is female, Cody is male. Contrast. And we're going to make certain assumptions. For example, well, give me an assumption that we make about the difference, the contrast between the two of them. One has a beard, one doesn't. That's, a, that's not an assumption, that's an observation. Okay. It's a mustache. <laughs> well, might we, might we and, and often don't, don't faculty make the assumption that Conrad, being a soccer player, is going to be a better at academics than Cody, who plays football? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> don't, but, no, I'm saying, I'm saying uh, isn't that an assumption that is often made? No, I've never heard this. You've never heard this? That's because people don't compare you to Ashley. <laughs> but once you know you, you understand that you are every bit as academically endowed as Ashley. She's pretty smart. She is pretty smart, but so are you. But the assumption as we get begin, our assumption on contrast is going to is going to um, is going to make a big difference to where we come out. And our assumption is based on unlikes being unrelated. Unlikes are being unrelated. We also, have an, we also have a rule of proximity. That is, those things which are near to one another are somehow related to one another. So, for example, um, let me go back to that one so we can talk a little bit about that. So, for example, you see two people, male and female, sitting together in the cafeteria on the same side of the table. What's a reasonable assumption, Will? They're that they're dating, right? Any other assumptions you might make about that, Stephen? Reasonable assumption. They're, they're uh, based on proximity. They're sitting on the same side of the table near one another. You, you're assuming they're dating. What else? Um, they're dating. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're team. They're team. You mean they're friends? They're friends. Okay, you <laughs> might assume that they're friends. But, all right, McClure, give me another assumption you might have, aside... Aside from they're a team. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I just go whisper in the background. That's what I do. Ashley, another assumption that you might make. Um, that they're family. That they're family. You might assume they're family. You might assume they're family. You might assume lots of things about them. Is that necessarily true? Well, no. Okay? You see two guys sitting close to one another on the same side of the table. What do you assume about them? They're really close friends. They're, they're close friends. <laughs> Or nothing at all. You may assume nothing at all because it may be that these two guys were part of ten guys sitting around one table and they had crowded together and the other eight had left and these two guys are sitting together. Generally, we will assume nothing at all about two guys sitting close together. Why do we, why do we assume nothing at all about two guys sitting together? Because it, it happens a lot. And what are we afraid of? Gay. That they might be gay. So we rather than rather than entertain that notion, we'll assume nothing at all. But proximity will allow us to assume certain things, often incorrect things. Another way we <coughs> we uh, make assumptions are through schemata. I'm going to close this up. And come on back. Schemata. Schemata are ways in which we organize our our world. Um, general ideas about individuals, yourself, or social roles. And this is from uh, Joseph DeVito's text. Those of you who've been with me in introductory, uh, Introduction to Human Con, this is uh, the text that we use there. And this is what he talks about when he talks about schemata. General ideas about individuals, yourself, or social roles. They are often based upon our experience, but not always and they are generalizations that are often derived from limited experience. So they are often hasty generalizations. But we make generalizations about, about uh, the world. A stereotype, and we all know stereotypes, a stereotype is an extreme of a schemata 
generalization about the world. So, Keenan, give me a stereotype for uh, rugby players. That they're tough. That they're tough, right? How do rugby players reinforce the stereotype that all rugby players are tough? They look pretty rough. They also they also have, have they also have often will have slogans that focus on bleeding and being hurt and being injured and playing with the injury. They don't wear pads. They don't wear pads and they hit as hard as football players. They do hit hard in rugby. Mm -hmm. It's just that you don't have that slam at the line. And nobody in rugby that I've seen is a 330-pound defensive lineman. I've not seen anybody like that. Keenan, do they exist? No. Because you're running too hard. Run. Yeah, everybody has to run, even when you come to a scrum. Everyone's just like a 250-pound running guy. Yeah, so it's, it's just that two That's trucks instead of three. Okay. We also have stereotypes we've mentioned, which is a fixed impression of a group of people. Stereotypes involve us in group life. It's not that your professor looks at you as they might look at McClure and go, pff, pff, okay, he's never going to pass. You know, that, that's a stereotype, not exactly, that's just, that's just a bias of assumption. But if we look at, if we look at McClure, Keenan, Will, and go, you know, soccer players, I'm stuck again, right? Oh, Will, did you quit? You quit? Oh, gosh. Well, he was. He was. He was. He was. He was. Thanks for the whisper, McClure. You can speak up. You can, Jackson, just speak up. Okay. So, so if, if, I, if I'm just assuming now uh, about a whole group, that's a stereotype, whereas the other is just prejudice. All members of organized crime are Italian. There's a stereotype for you. All members of organized crime are Italian. Where do you get that kind of stereotype? Movies. Mafia movies, primarily, right? So you have you have the stereotype of, of they're all Italian, and, and it's reinforced by Godfather, by Sopranos, by what you get on uh, Goodfellas. In fact, in Goodfellas, one of the subplots is that uh, it's not Ray Liotta, whose character. Somebody can't be made because they're not Italian. The same in, in uh, Casino. All of these Italian gangster movies. So if you run across... Somebody who's not Italian, who doesn't have an Italian name, like, say, Johnson or Anderson or Nelson, you go, well, they, how did they get into organized crime? They're not Italian, right? So it calls in, into question that stereotype. And who was one of the great criminals of the, of the 20th century? Babyface Nelson. Babyface Nelson. He was from Wisconsin. His name wasn't actually Nelson. He wasn't Scandinavian. But to have, if you had a Scandinavian uh, um, gangster, you would immediately go, whoa, that's not right. That seems odd. Yet there were, historically, there's, there was Babyface Nelson, Bugsy Siegel. There were Jews and, and non-Italians involved in organized crime. But we, we think that uh, that the mafia is all, all organized crime is, is in fact uh, Italian. But you also have positive stereotypes. You know, all Swedes are, are neat and clean and industrious. This was a common stereotype in the early 20th century where you would have advertisements in the local paper. I have actually seen these where it would say, made, wanted, Swedish preferred. You know, and you, you had the, the other side, no Irish need apply. Today, we have, we have many positive stereotypes about Asians, like Asians are smart. Terrible smart. Drivers. Are what? Terrible drivers. Terrible drivers. That's a negative one. Positive They're stereotype good. about Asians? They're good with technology. They're good with technology. Uh, although, if you go to Japan, there was a great article my son put up from, on Crack Magazine, 10 Things You Wouldn't Believe About Japan. Japan is great at technology for everybody else, but they don't use it at, at home. They're still using fax machines. They won't accept email with attachments as proof that you've done it. You have to fax it to them. Fax machines are still huge in Japan. Their ATMs are only available when the bank is open. 
And most ATMs won't accept your credit card. I went, when I was there, I was trying to get money because I didn't realize I had to bring money. Everything is cash. You go buy a car in Japan, you got like a big wad of yen. You're paying 17, 18,000 yen, 20, no, million yen for a car, and you do it in cash. There are no, they, people don't take long term loans in Japan, they just pay cash. Really odd. But we all, we think that they're great at technology, we think they're great at, what are Altara Asians great at? Ping pong. Ping pong, right? So there's this great mad TV <laughs> where, where uh, Bobby Lee comes in and they want him to teach him how to, teach me how to do origami or play ping pong. And it turns out Bobby Lee is good at ping pong. There you go. Good at math, but lousy drivers. Biases of assumption include scripts. Scripting is an organized body of information about some action, event, or procedure, usually, usually an event or procedure. So you go to the restaurant. What's your script when you go to the restaurant? Shepard, what's your script when you go to the restaurant? Sit down and, eat. and what does the what does the server say to you as soon as you get there? What would you like to drink? Okay. First thing is what would you like to drink? But before they even do that, though, they say, Hi, I am Hi, I'm, I'm Carl. I'll be your server tonight. What can I get you to drink? How long do they have before they, before they have to do this? 30 seconds. That's it. Nicolette, <laughs> Nicolette Unruh, graduate of this institution, who has, was a communication major, is running Inferno and training people for Martinelli's. That's what she trains them. 30 seconds. Within 30 seconds of the time those people sit down, you must approach the table and introduce yourself and ask them for their drink order. Okay? You would never accept somebody serving coming to you and say, Hi, today you'll be having... Right? That you, that's not the script. The script is, what can I get you to drink for drinks? Are you ready for, to order? And you wouldn't say, here's your bill as soon as you place the order. Okay? You order... I'll have a pizza. Okay, here's your bill. We'll bring the pizza in 30 minutes. You would do that. Events and procedures are scripted. How to order a meal is a common script. How to ask for a date, it's a common script. Jensen, can a, can a girl ask for a date? Yeah. It's, but it's pretty awkward. Yeah, it's different. It's pretty awkward. What's the script as for a guy asking for a date? It's just not as necessary. But it's, all, it's usually the guy that's asking. Right, but what does he ask? What does he say? Um, what about some of the other meetings over there? Right, and Cody, you would never say to a girl, Hi, do you want to go back to my room and make out? Cody would never say that. Debatable. Debatable. But you probably, especially if it's somebody you don't know very well. This is a first date. On a first date, you may hope that that's the outcome at the end, but you would never go up to a girl and say, so, you want to go make out? Actually, that's only the outcome if they don't know him well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Shame. Shame. Okay. We script how we ask for a date. We script how to do the laundry. Right? What did your mother tell you, gentlemen? Nick, what did your mother tell you about doing your laundry? Learn how to do it. Turn it inside out and wear it on the <laughs> <laughs> That's what your fellow, your fellow students told you. What did your mother tell you about doing your laundry? Separate whites and colors. Separate whites and colors. Okay. <laughs> what is? What do you do? What do you do with road? Well, uh, with uh, road rash. With what do you do with the uh, stains? Spray and wash. So you got an instruction. Do you have a script for how you do this? We have. To, I know it is disgusting. We have a script for what a member of the class might say. We have a script for what a professor might say. Not disgusting things. Okay? <laughs> biases of cognition. One of the biases of cognition is called the fundamental attribution error. We make this all the time, but we don't call it that. This comes from research done in the, in the uh, 50s, actually, by a uh, psychologist at KU. And what he found out was that we tend to overvalue the contribution of internal factors and undervalue the influence of external factors. In other words, what people, we do, what people do is a consequence of who people are. 
and their situation has relatively little to do with their behavior. So overattribution means that one or two obvious characteristics are taken to account for the whole of our behavior. One or two obvious characteristics account for the whole of our behavior. Well, of course they would do that. They're Japanese. Of course they're good at math. They're Asian. You can't expect me to keep, to, to keep up with them. They're Asian. How did Bethany College reinforce that overattribution? That stereotype of Asians as good at math. What did we do about three years ago to help reinforce that? We hired, an, we hired a Chinese math teacher, right? So that was, you know, it's like, oh, okay, let's get the smartest person we can. Chinese, oh, of course. Well, from what I hear, she's really good, but, but we use, we attribute, we over-attribute just a couple of things. Um, okay? The rich kid is irresponsible because she's never had to work for the money. The blind guy's always sleeping because he's blind. And he lacks visual stimulation. I don't know. No. <laughs> we also have a self-serving bias. Self-serving bias is anything good, I did. Anything bad was done to me. Right? Anything good, I did. Anything bad was done to me. So we talk about the president's behavior and, and the recession, right? If it's bad, the president will want to claim credit if it's good, will want to blame if it's bad. The other side, the, what, and it doesn't matter who's in power, the other side, if it's a Republican president, the Democrats will blame the president for anything that's bad and will take, will will credit external factors for anything that's good. So that when Mitt Romney was running and he said, I, can, I will make 12 million jobs in the first four years of my administration, lots of, of critics on the left said, well, of course, as we come out of a recession, that's the number you'd expect. That's about 3 million jobs a year. Nothing big about that. That's what you would expect. Which, you know, which is... If you look at the Obama administration, if they had 100,000 jobs a month, which they've been lucky to have the last three months, I think, um, if that was the average, that's a million two in 12 months, or not more, a million two in, in 10 months. So, you know, it's not out of, out, of, uh, uh, out of line to say you could create 12 million jobs. But the, the Democrats want to blame it, want to put the credit on external factors, Romney wanted to claim credit for himself. Okay. It's really the fault of policies that were instituted more than a decade ago. We've heard that. Or student problems. Student problems. We are at the end of the term. We all have to face that. We all have problems finishing up, right? We all have way too much to do. Did we just give you those assignments last week? Some. Some. Most not. All of them. Most not. Okay. Teachers do too. Yeah, teachers do too. Face the end of the term. Oh, I got to give you a paper. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, teachers. I was facing the end of the term and I realized I wasn't going to be able to grade it properly, so we cut a couple of things. A couple Boom. of classes. A couple of classes. Because there's no point in that. There's no point in that. Okay? And one of the things we'll say is, you know, how can I do, do well with all of this pressure? Concupiscence is usually taken to mean, this is a biases of dishonesty. Concupiscence is usually taken to mean lust, but I'm using it more as a self-serving desire. The self curved in upon itself as Luther saw it. It's also kind of hegemonic behaviors. That is, we'll take over by any means necessary. And it means that we're trying to control the other person. So, behaviors from ignorance. That is, the demagogue, 
who, be, who relies upon the, the crowd being ignorant of the actual facts will make an emotional argument that will sway the crowd uh, and, and will agitate the crowd. We saw this in Huey Long, those of you who took persuasion. We spent a lot of time looking at Huey Long, who was a, a great persuader, but tended to demagogue, tended to ignore facts. We see this frequently with Fox News, where, fo where facts are optional, but Sean Hannity is great at stirring up the crowd. It's demagoguery. Rush Limbaugh, uh, I can't think of anybody on the left who's quite as successful as Limbaugh. Historically, Elmer Gantry is a character who demagogues, who, uh, it's a great novel. I recommend to you that you read Sinclair Lewis's Elmer Gantry, we are surrounded by lots of Elmer Gantries. The demagogue knows what he or she says is not true, that it is a lie, but they will say it anyway. So how can we avoid bias? Well, we can't. That's the first thing we should take home from this. You cannot avoid your biases. They are there. They are just part of who you are. It's also known as a point of view, and everybody has a point of view. You can adopt a neutral point of view as Wikipedia demands. Those of you who have ever looked at the wiki policies, it's important that they're an important part of Wikipedia. Look at the wiki policies. Um, they, they ask you to adopt a neutral point of view in everything you write. No new research is one of their, one of their criteria. You cannot take a, a, uh, a, a controversial stand in the Wikipedia. We can mitigate our biases, first of all, by admitting we have them. We have biases about what professors should and should not say. They should not talk about skid marks. That is a no-no. Thank you. Uh, it took me a while to remember that term. Well. It's not road rash, it's skid marks. Um, they should not talk about that. They should not talk about, they should not talk about unseemly things in class. We can check our perceptions. If we think that Cody is just like every other football player, we have to check that. And what I've discovered in my 10 years here at Bethany College is that no two football players are alike. They are as different as every other student in, in the college. Some of them are extremely smart. Some of them uh, are not. Most of them are very hardworking. Uh, they will try if given a reasonable chance, some of them will not try. But that doesn't mean that I start out any semester assuming things about football players, but it does mean that I must check myself and watch that I don't make assumptions. The same is true about women. I tend to make assumptions about women that women will do better than men in all my classes, because women, I'm told, are more verbal, more willing to talk, more open, and more open to new ideas, and more willing to, often more willing to read than men. But I have to check that assumption because I come upon uh, women who are not like that. And I need to not let that bias stand in the way of dealing with the actual person. We need to check our perceptions. We need to reduce uncertainty. This is true in interpersonal relationships in particular. Reduction of uncertainty means that you check, you ask. You don't assume that it just because you asked someone out and they said no, that they will never go out with you. You check. Would you ever go out with me? You don't assume that just because someone didn't do well on a test, that it's because they're not very bright. You check. Was there something going on? You give them another chance. You open things up. You give opportunity because your per initial perception could be wrong. Reduce your uncertainty. Increase your cultural sensitivity. Not every Asian person plays ping pong. Just most. Not every Japanese does origami. Not every Japanese looks like a typical Japanese. 
There are some Japanese who look very American, look very Western. Many Japanese do not, but there are some. Just because they are Japanese does not mean that they are technological wizards or that they carry a camera every place they go. Okay? Check your biases. Improve your perceptions. That concludes our, our, our subject of biases. The final exam will cover this material and will ask you to think about bias in a particular way. Some of the answers are short answers, multiple choice, but there are some essay questions. And it will ask you to think about your own biases and the biases of others. There's a question, for example, that I ask you about my bias versus Professor Yorton's bias. He's gone, but I liked the question so much I haven't changed it. Because he and I would battle over, over whether or not it was possible to teach and to measure our biases and to reduce our, our biases. And I would always say, yes, I think it is. I think it's possible to teach it and possible to learn it. And possible to reduce our, our bias. Our last, <clears throat> our last two class periods will be spent doing, Stephen, time to, time to follow me with the camera. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Whoops. All right, guys, so here's our, last, here's our last assignment. We're going to spend the last two days of class creating community with debate. And our, our topic is green dorms. And we're going to bring the resolve. <laughs> Bethany College should convert dorms to green dorms. Okay. So what I need, I need some volunteers. You've done the research, you've got some material on green dorms, etc. So I need some research, need some material, need some folks. I'm not screwing this one. No, no. The good, good. <laughs> When's Jenna? She needs to take pictures. Yeah, Jenna needs to take pictures. We're Jenna's sick, so so this is one of the reasons that we're doing this. Um, so that she gets this. Jenna? Green dorms. Tell her I told her to. Okay. <laughs> green dorms. All right. So green dorms is our topic. Um, Bethany College should convert to green dorms to green dorms, and it, rather than being a an adversarial, this will be a uh, a, a commutarian version of debate. Your goal is to find an agreeable place, <laughs> children. I will. Children, I'll come back there. <laughs> Don't make me come back there. Don't make me turn this classroom around. <laughs> what I'm looking for is I'm looking for volunteers for each day. So let me get some names. Who wants to go Wednesday? Your idea, the idea is you'll each get a chance, however many people we've got on each side, you'll each get a chance to present your point of view, and then you'll negotiate with one another to see if you can't find a mutually acceptable point of view. So, so we're agreeing on... We have 15 people. So what you want to do, the affirmative would bring all the ways Bethany mm -hmm. can and should, can and should, Convert the current dorms to green dorms. What would it take to become green dorms? Can we do that? Should we do that? That's what we're looking for. Okay? So who wants the negative would, would take the position, no, we can't do that. It's too expensive, it's too cost prohibitive, there's too much that has to be torn out, there's too it just wouldn't work. They try to agree. And your goal is neither side winning or losing. But finding, finding a way in the middle. I'll go affirmative on Friday. Okay. Okay, this is Friday, this is Wednesday. This week or next? That's this week, guys. I'll go affirmative on Friday. Does that make sure? I'll go Friday affirmative. Steven? Jessica? 
I'll do it too. I'll go negative. Do we get points for this? Negative one. Who? Yeah. 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 I said Cody. Yes, sir. I want negative on Wednesday, if you please. Okay, Cody. And this is my son, Junker. Jeremy. 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 Junker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will just I'll do the same. Good job, Will. Gay. Why are people so verbal in this room? I like it. You gotta laugh. I know. This is what comes in my head. I just what comes in my head, guys. I can't help myself. Okay, it's in the Bible, Jeremy. I'll go for my Thank you. Your last name's there. Okay, look at it. Leviticus. You ruined it. You ruined it. The Bible also says that you should. No, this is just Have you ever eaten shrimp? No. You've never eaten shrimp? No. Yes, I've eaten shrimp. Leviticus says you should. The Bible's also coming from my death. Okay, who else we got? We got KJ. 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 On a Friday. I'll do negative on Friday. Yeah. Negative on Wednesday? No, it's negative on Friday. I'll get negative on Wednesday, too. I don't know, I can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. That's bullshit, though. So, are you saying, Jeremy, that the Bible has no validity? Is that what you're saying? No. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. No, we gotta get it from the Bible. We gotta get Brock in. They sell me the Bible. Stephen. Hey, Kane almost moved from Friday to Wednesday. No, because then I was gonna do both. But we've got three to four. That's not <laughs> cool. Okay. So here's how it'll go. You need to bring you need to bring your evidence. Bring your evidence files. And if you want to resubmit, this is a good time to resubmit after your debate. Okay. You come in. One member of the group should be prepared. So the group needs to meet. You can meet real quickly. One member of the group should be prepared to start things off, and we'll start always with the affirmative. Everybody in the group will have four minutes for an initial statement. We'll go affirmative, negative, affirmative, negative. Is this like real proper like the others, or is it just... It's a little more free-flowing. Okay. Okay. Uh, there will not be a debate ballot for the people out. The debate ballot will simply be a sheet of paper on which you can write notes to the people you think are doing really good, really well, and really good. Do good. You did good. Give us that good boy. <laughs> okay. People who are doing well, you write them a note and say, "You, I thought you did a, a, a wonderful job. Excellent. Excelente. Etc. People who, yeah, not so well. Um, that's, you know, that that's also a choice. You can do that. The idea here is to build community. Find a way that you can overcome the differences overcome the, if the affirmative says, well, what we need to do will take three and a half million dollars, we've got that, if we don't build the, uh, uh, the Chapel Welcome Center. That's, we don't need to do that, we need to convert dorms. The negative might say, well, that's true, but the people who gave the money for the Chapel Welcome Center gave it for Chapel Welcome Center, and if we don't build that, we don't have three million dollars. So, so, ha, is that true? So, ha, that actually is true. Okay. That actually is true. Yeah. We have the money, and we, we pretty much have the money on hand to build the Chapel Welcome Center, but it's, it won't come out of any of your pockets. So, at any rate, what you're trying to do, what you're aiming to do is, what are the affirmatives? What are the positives about green dorms? What are the problems with green dorms? How do we solve them? So, you'll have a four-minute four speech, and then each person will have up to three additional minutes after they hear. So we'll go through the round once, and we'll go back. You'll have a chance, and it doesn't have to be in the same order. So teams get together one time, pick a leader, pick somebody to start. We'll raid you up front. We'll sit down. The rest of us will sit out. I'll video. This is your last grade. I will guarantee you that if you participate and you take up to three-fourths of that time that you've been allotted, that's an A performance, because this is a much freer this is a much freer uh, form than our debates. There are no rules. There are no rules other than be polite. Be polite. <laughs>
Okay? No flame wars in this. No one is allowed to say, Shepherd, you ignorant soccer player. You ignorant shorty. It says that we agree on one thing. The team needs to agree on who's going to lead the team. Oh, no, no, I'm saying like between the negative and you're, you're aiming to try to get, to try and find that place. And somebody may, somebody may hear something in the debate that, that goes, oh, you know what would fix this whole problem? Is if we do this. And that opens a whole new place to discuss. Can we get a long table in here just to set the mood a little bit? Well, unfortunately, no. Sorry, it's a good idea, Keenan, but unfortunately it can't happen. Why? Huh? We can set a Because you have to go find it. If you find me, if you find a long table and bring it in, I'll be happy. Deal. Okay. All right. So let's stop the camera. Time to go to.